Oh, Susan, I'm so sorry. My deepest condolences. Yes, thank you. Marcus. Marcus. Oh, Marcus. Uh, thank you for coming. Mm -hmm. Well, we're all going to miss him terribly. Yes, he's a great loss. Oh, we'll miss him. Yes. You must feel terrible. Well, don't feel good if it wasn't such a shock. Well, that is always a shock. I mean, for one minute you're sitting at home and then death goes boom! And suddenly somebody falls down dead. Oh, uh, yes. Were those his last words? Were they boo? What? <laughs> boo? No, he really didn't have any last words. Oh, okay. How about noises? Uh, noises? What? Well, you know, like uh, high-pitched shrieking ones or low go-go noises, like uh. Oh, Susan, you poor, poor thing. Well, all alone in the house now. Alone in the, alone in the kitchen. One in the dining room, one in the living room. <laughs> Not living room, that's a modern phrase now, isn't it? Please, don't walk away. But you have to mourn, Susan, to mourn. I mean, I always thought the Irish were right to do all that keen stuff. Do you want a keen, Susan? Huh. Not really, thank you, anyway. Well, I've seen a good old Negro spiritual. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> we know. Oh. Thank you so much for coming. <laughs> I don't want to sing. I don't want to sing or sing. I'm an Episcopalian. I'll cry quietly in my room later this evening. Now I must attend to the other mourners. Susan, you're avoiding the sadness. I, I can't let you do that. Please, please let me do that. It's been a terrible day. I have to bring my husband. Well, you, is he in here? Uh, I mean, he's not in some uh, some other uh, room propped up in some stuffed chair waiting to give someone a fright now, is he? Certainly not. Thank you so much for coming. <laughs> well, that would give someone quite a fright. I mean, think about it. They're just standing there talking to him, and then suddenly they realize that he's stone cold dead. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I'm going to miss him, too. How nice, or rather, how sad. Well, time knows everything. <sighs> we used to exchange morning pleasantries. Uh, you know, like, uh, uh, good morning, or uh, cold enough out there for you, or this train seems to be on time today for a change. <laughs> I see. Excuse me, I think the mortician is signaling. You know, your husband was the only one on that whole damn train who was even willing to speak to me. How did you speak? I mean, everyone else would just pretend to be asleep as soon as I started talking to them. But they didn't fool me, I'm no dope. You can't sleep standing up. Oh. <laughs> okay. Well, if you're tired enough, maybe you can. Yeah. Father Fate. <laughs> <laughs> seance and everything. Well, he's dead. But I have this medium friend who gave me this 800 number to call uh, if you want to reach other people. Hey, do you want to use the number to reach your husband on the other side? I don't think so. Thank you so much for coming. Oh, well, you're welcome. I just feel so terrible. I don't even know what I'm going to do on the train in the morning. Oh, well, why don't you read There's an idea. Do you have any suggestions? Oh, I don't know. Great expectations, phone numbers, any book. Yeah, my favorite book is Barbara the Yellow. <laughs> Have you read it? No, but I hear wonderful things. Well, thank you so much for coming. Goodbye. Hey, are you leaving? No, I'm not leaving. I want you to leave. You're making the hysterical kitchen ticket hits. When I say thank you for coming, that's code for going out. Don't you understand that? Oh. <sighs> I thought it just meant thank you for coming.
coming. Mm -hmm. I realized there was some special Is there anything else you've said in code that I haven't understood? <laughs> no, <we're talking. laughs> Oh, no, you don't need to feel guilty about expressing emotions, Susan. That's a good thing. You've had a terrible loss. Well, Susan, I, I always thought that cane was a very appropriate thing to do at a funeral. Are you sure you don't want a cane?